My name is uh, Dr. Kent Remington. I'm a practicing dermatologist in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, focusing on lasers the last number of years and aesthetics only. I actually started the first private laser center in Canada in 1979. And since that time, I have performed over 120,000 laser cases. We actually have uh, 24 laser light energy systems on clinic at the present time and, and uh, three complete ultra pulse CO2 laser systems. If we look at the ultra pulse CO2 laser, it has quite a number of options, including the defocused modes, which we'll talk about more in this presentation, and the focus technique, where I perform excisions of tumors including lipomas, pilar cysts, basal cysts, and particularly focus on uh, upper and lower eyelid blepharoplasties, which I've done a little over 10,000 the last 22 years. So we'll talk more about the defocus concepts of how this laser utilizes energy from the system for nevi, seborrheic keratosis, acrocordons, and cherry angiomas, particularly cherry angiomas that are uh, elevated beyond the range of vascular lasers that we use in our clinic. And even patients with skin of color with protruding compound nevi in the face can remove nicely without scarring uh, and without significant pigment changes if the technique is done properly. So it's a defocus method, and ideally we trim off the excess part of the compound nevus with a scalpel blade after freezing it with a local anesthetic. And then here's where the laser comes into play. It acts as an eraser and shrinks the base of the lesion down and feathers out the edge. So the very little heat involved. So the end result is the combined therapy is quite impressive as opposed to excising it or a cautery or liquid nitrogen. And even men that have uh, nevi in the beard areas where the laser can remove the base of the nevus without disturbing the hair follicles as the nevus in compound nevi is above the actual hair follicles. So in patients that have multiple uh, nevi, like this patient who is Caucasian, a uh, white patient with compound elevated nevi that are distracting, we can remove these all at the same time. And there are a little mark that's left, but aesthetically they're very pleasing compared to any other technique. It's a very common procedure in our clinic and uh, very rewarding for patient and physician. If we look at the excision mode with uh, the use for blepharoplasties, upper eyelid transcutaneous laser blepharoplasty and lower eyelid transconjunctival combined with other modalities. Most of the treatments we do in our clinic are combination techniques. So if we look at patients that have combination concepts, here our patient has a bag gap eyelids that are genetic with extra skin and fat pads and protruding compound nevi that are uh, distracting for her. So you can do this the same day as the upper eyelid transcutaneous laser blepharoplasty, or you can do them separate times. So with the nevi, a very nice tidy procedure with a defocus mode. Even patient with skin of color with this compound uh, congenital nevus, one of the first steps is to debulk it and erase it as much as we can with ultra CO2 laser. Some patients that have pigment remaining, then we can use our Q-switch lasers. In this case, skin of color, we would use the Q-switch 1064. But in here, this patient, we did not need that. The results are excellent. So if we see separate keratosis, which is a common occurrence in society, uh, all patients develop these eventually if they live long enough. It's, it's a genetic trait plus time element. And the skin is essentially like a garden. We grow lots of weeds, and as we get more miles on us, we grow more weeds. So these are distracting, annoying, uncomfortable, and patients dislike them. So the past treatment has involved liquid nitrogen, cautery, acids, excision, the problem with most of these is their recurrence rate is high and they can leave pigment changes. So the ultra pulse CO2 laser is ideal. With a little local anesthetic and a defocus mode, the laser acts like a camera. We can focus it or defocus it. And these are vaporized and smoothed right out. And the recurrence is uncommon. Patients develop new lesions, but the recurrence of the same site is uncommon. 
So some patients are apprehensive, so we'll often treat in that type of patient just a localized area like this larger lesion. So this is removed with the ultra pulse CO2 laser defocus mode, just melts it off like an eraser, seal the base and feather out the edge, and then the patient will go ahead and remove others at a later date. So if we look at the simple technique that this is, with looking at more the defocus mode, and we can use the factory 0 0.1, 0 0.2 millimeter spot size here, I'm using the 0.1, and just defocus and melt it, it's sort of like popcorn, it just pops, heats it to 100 degrees Celsius, and then trim it off is the most important thing with a curette or a gauze, and then seal the base. That lessens the chance of recurrence. So patients with dermatosis papillosa nigra, which is more of skin of color patients, is very common. And it's not a good idea to use liquid nitrogen as the pigment changes are often unwanted with uh, skin of color patients. And cautery is not a good idea. Excising them is not necessary. So gentle ultra pulse CO2 laser is ideal. So we can treat these patients. Uh, usually I'll do a test area first, but you can treat them like the, I just demonstrated with the lesion on the back. Just vaporize them and feather out the edges. So here are patients in skin of color, Japanese patient that has some unwanted areas. We do a test plus area first like this, and then if we're all happy with it, we can treat others that the patient does not like. So same with this patient, skin of color, and the reason for the longevity here, the one and a half years later, is patient was out of the country, and then when she came back, we had excellent end result by having excellent photography to, to showcase this and then we can treat other areas that she dislikes. Pyogenic granulomas are not certainly not uncommon and more common during pregnancy. Difficult to treat with cautery or excision because of the scarring. The ultra pulse CO2 laser defocus mode is ideal. These heal very well and very rarely do they return. So it's an excellent option. So xanthelasma and lesions around the orbits are common from milia to syringomas to xanthelasma lesions. Traditionally, we've used acid in the past or excision or cautery, but the ultra pulse CO2 laser in a defocus mode, often combining it with the uh, urban MIAG laser first. It's a little bit like being a chef. It's difficult to eat any ingredient with, with just one one thing, we need to have combination treatment. We need to understand the language of common ease, which is combining different treatments and knowing the syntax of the combination and when and where. So if we look at eyelids, with the xanthelasma as an example, as these are quite common, and the defocus mode, you can use the factory 0.2 millimeter handpiece in the ultra pulse setting or the 0.1 millimeter spot side. This is an example of eyelid lesions that we treat with uh, ultra pulse CO2 laser. And once uh, we've isolated the area, we'll need to use uh, shields, these oculoplastic shields from Montreal. And this is just the technique that I use. Instead of the upper fornix, that's often demonstrated to use the lower fornix much easier. This little uh, suction cup, and just is just demonstrating how easy they are to insert and to take out. So these are important protection. Here we've outlined the serum, the, uh, these are xanthelasmas actually, and injecting them with a, a dilute buffered anesthetic with sodium bicarb and a 32 gauge needle. And because they're just epidermis dermis, it sits right on orbicularis oculi muscle. And here I'm using, first step is uh, Erbium YAG laser to vaporize these as there's very little heat with an Erbium YAG. So we'll vaporize the first layers, and then now the second step is a CO2 laser to seal the base and feather the edge out. So in my experience, to have the best result with the least scarring is use both the Erbium YAG laser and the CO2 laser for xanthelasmas and syringomas of the orbits. And the end results can be very good. Recurrence is possible, but uncommon. Here shows minimal scarring, excellent end result, and uh, a very popular procedure in our clinic. So if we look at our patient with skin of color that is unhappy about his baggy lower eyelids, but he also has xanthelasma lesions. And there's a small percentage of patients that have uh, lipid abnormalities, so the family physician, return, referring physician will have investigated that. 
uh, to make sure they don't have elevated triglycerides or cholesterol. So this is a combination, this language of common ease, where we'll perform a uh, lower eyelid transconjunctiva of blepharoplasty combined with uh, treating the xanthalasma. So if you look at what we've done here with this trans conjunctival approach first and then right after we'll smooth out the loose skin with a combination of erbium YAG laser and the ultra pulse CO2 laser for both the xanthalasma and the loose skin. So this creates an excellent end result with a very uncommon recurrence. So serangomas are common. They're benign eccrine sweat gland uh, tumors that are benign, but they are distracting, annoying for patients who want to wear makeup. They start out small and subtle and become more obvious with time. They're a genetic trait in some families, and they occur in all skin types. So if we look at this patient who is a, a white patient that has multiple small serangomas, they're subtle, but they're distracting. So the treatment can be excellent. And some patients will have a recurrence rate, so be careful not to over-treat them or under-treat them. So I use both an Erbium MIAG laser step one and then step two, ultra pulse CO2 laser defocus mode, all done during the same clinic visit. So skin and color patient with impressive uh, syringomas and uh, with careful treatment, you can feather the edge out. Here I've outlined the actual majority of the syringomas and treated those first with uh, Erbium YAG 2940 wavelength laser, and right after the Erbium YAG for the whole zone, so that there's a nice even uh, transition of normal skin to the treated skin. And then the ultra pulse CO2 laser to blend out all the base of the syringomas, and then feather it out with Erbium YAG laser so you get that nice end result. So there's a little technique involved in how to treat these. So in a patient like this, it's typical of our clinic that have a combination challenge or baggy upper eyelids or genetic with extra skin and fat pads and syringomas in the lower eyelid with uh, wrinkles that are disliked, particularly with animation. So upper eyelid transcutaneous ultra pulse laser blood proplasty and resurfacing the lower eyelid with urban MIAG laser and uh, combined ultra pulse CO2 laser to remove the syringomas. So if we look at the focus technique again of what we do in the focus mode, I use an aftermarket 0.1 millimeter handpiece for excising pilers, it's the scalp space assist, epidermal inclusion assist, and lipomas. This is an excellent option. Thank you very much.